Uh, this is um, our second podcast. Oh, are we starting? Yes, we are starting. You never tell me when we're starting. You just start talking. Well, I like to keep you loose. I don't want you to get all flustered. and I would rather you be flustered and record it than get you flustered and not hear it. Okay. So, this is our second. Uh, first one was a pilot. It was a little shorter, so I'd like to make this one uh, a little longer. Um, and uh, I really... Uh, I don't know. Why are we doing this? What is the point of this? I enjoy it. What is the point of the podcast? Yeah. Um, I mean, for our three fans that have... Uh, four now. F- four? We have four? Yeah. Oh. I, got a, I got a friend back home who's a big fan. Okay. Well, I mean, for the four fans that have weathered the pilot and now is for some reason returned to our second episode, uh, I just kind of like, do we have a direction? Pretty presumptuous of you to assume it's the same four. <laughs> that is true. That is true. The first three might have shot themselves after the first one. That's really... Like, I can't handle this. That's that's <laughs> down. It's only 23 minutes. Can't handle that. that yeah, I really enjoyed it, too. I don't know. That might be super arrogant. I don't know. But I really enjoyed that first one. It was, it was funny to me. Yeah, and I've, I've got so much Mississippi roads we need to record more. Just yeah. desk time here. We never did finish that pamphlet. No, but I still have the second half of the first time we read it. Like, part yeah. B. And that'll be on this one. That'll be, that'll be later. All right. So uh, it's Christmas time here right now. Yes, that's Christmas right. Just ended. I wanted to wish you a merry post Christmas and a pre New Year. A merry post Christmas and a happy pre New Year. All right. So on my way back from uh, on my way back from Oklahoma, right? It's a long drive, and most of it's through Louisiana. So you know, I hate that. And, uh, I stopped at this gas station, um, to fill up and to get some food, to fuel the car in my belly. And, uh, I walk in and there's this lady behind the grill and I ask her if the grill's the still... The grill? Yeah. At, like, a convenience store? No, I... Did you not have, like, gas station restaurants where you're from? Where they're like gas stations, but they also have grills and like a menu. Yeah, but I feel like calling it a grill is being extremely... It's a grill. Like, like they have a Giving grill. them the benefit of the doubt. So, Alright, whatever. Anyways, I walk up to the grill and there's this lady standing there. And I'm like, you know, just that natural first impression. Oh, I'm sure she's nice. She's like, what do you want? I was like, oh my, I'm so sorry. Um, um, do you, are you guys open? She's like, uh, yeah, girl's still running. And I was like, okay, well, how do I order? And she just like points to the end of the bar, and there's a menu sitting there. And I was like, oh, okay, well. Uh, there's a bar now? It's like a bar in front of the grill where they like set the food for people to pick up and stuff. Not like a liquor bar. Oh, okay. Just a bar table. Okay. A long, narrow table in front of the grill, Thank and she you. points to the end of it. Okay, cool. Now, I, now I'm with you. And she's like, she's like, or uh, I start reading the menu, and it takes me a minute because there's like weird shit on there, like oysters and. How far south in Louisiana? Uh, like north, three miles, three hours from the coast. Oh. And they're just selling oysters yeah. at a convenience store bar yeah. grill. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. So okay. I was looking at it and I'm like, uh, I'll just have the burger and uh, I'll have everything on it except for sauce. I don't want sauce. She's like, what you mean no sauce? And I was like, uh, I was, I'm taking back a little bit. I'm like, uh, like ketchup and mustard. I don't want any of that. And she's like, well, it comes with ketchup and mustard. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah, I don't want that, please. And she was like, Oh, so you mean no sauce. (laughs) And in that moment, this little paradigm shifted in my head, and I'm like, I know why you're working here. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. I know what puts you in this not even a town in Louisiana at this not even a restaurant. Oh, well, that's getting kind of mean there, but maybe she's just hard of hearing. I'm pretty hard of hearing. I had a hard time when I worked at Moe's. Moe's. Moe's Southwestern Grill. Welcome to Moe's! Welcome to Moe's! And if you didn't say that, you'd get in trouble. Like Firehouse? Or like... Fire? No, I've never been in you never been to Firehouse no. Subs? No. And neither had I until the other day, and they were like, Hello, welcome to Firehouse. 
but oh. they say that to every single person. Well, it's probably a similar thing. Yeah. Yeah. Did you know, there's an interesting story my boss told me. Uh, I think I've already told you this, but he was, uh, it was one of his employees, not his employees, sorry. It was one of his mentor's employees uh, who owned True Value or something like that. I don't know if you know what that is, but they all wear these red vests, mm -hmm. right? Every single one of them. And he goes... One of his employees is like, I don't want to wear this vest. And he's like, uh, he's like, take him out. He's like, I don't really care. <laughs> wear the vest. <laughs> and he's just, just like defying him, right? Mm -hmm. And he he wouldn't wear it. And he was having this issue. And he, was, he kept working with the kid and kept working with the kid. And he's like, he kept making excuses for the kid. He's like, well, the kid's got, had a, had a rough home life. And he's just some, some punk kid or whatever. And his mentor, right? Uh, he tells him, he goes to him and he's like, what? He, he says, I'm having a hard time enjoying work. I uh, doesn't mention the kid at all. It's like, I'm having a hard time enjoying work. Uh, I'm very stressed. We're having a hard time making money. Um, this is when they were very first starting out. And he goes, his mentor goes, well, uh, what's one of the things that stresses you out in the day? And he's like, well, he got this employee who doesn't want to wear his, wear his vest, but that's pretty small. And the, um, but then he, I don't know, he, he lists off some other things to stress him out. He's like, that employee, fire him. He's like, what? Just completely take it back because he took his, he like picked up from the smallest thing. Yeah, the very first thing that yeah. was it, he didn't think was important. Yeah. And he's like, fire him, come back to me. And so he fires him, comes back to him, and he's like, oh my God. Everything's so easy now. All my employees listen. Everything just falls in line. I get rid of the one troublemaker because I guess he was an instigator of everything. Mm. And uh, all of a sudden, all the employees, nobody minds wearing the vest. It's just part you of the know, uniform. That that sounds like that's some good advice that you should apply. Not in every situation in one's life. But if I were to apply that to my situation in life, uh, getting rid of the instigator, uh, dealing with <clears throat> my animals or my wife's animals... <laughs> It'd be hard to pick which one, <laughs> because her dog. That's a weird twist. But yeah, yeah her, her, her dogs. Abrams does a lot. Uh, it, it, it's usually he's just rambunctious and he's chasing Cinder, chasing a cat, and that's him instigating. But the cats, and now I'm starting to. I, I don't know which one it is, but they climb all over the counters, knock all sorts of shit off. Last night, the first night we got back from traveling. Yeah, you put tape on the counters upside yeah. down. Yeah, <laughs> I know, and I need to start Have you ever doing walked it. in? Have you ever walked in on a cat just like in a big ball of tape? No, Andrea has. I want to see that. I, so I really do, but I was already in bed when I heard the commotion. Yeah. And I said, I don't care, I'll check it out tomorrow morning. And Andrea's like, no, i got to go rescue him. And it was her <laughs> cat, uh, Butters, and he was at, in the corner in the bathroom uh, like with like tape sticking to him, and he's just like in the corner <laughs> freaking out, and, you know. And uh, she uh, got it off of him, and uh, I think she should have just left it uh, until the morning, you know. Uh, yeah, it's like that. Anyways, so I wouldn't know which instigator to get rid of. I mean, all I'd have would be my dog, and that's the only one of the animals, and um, I'd be all right with that. But get rid of your dog. Hmm. Get rid of Cinder. No, I'm saying angel. if we got rid of the instigators, all we'd have left would be my Cinder. dog. Your yeah. perfect dog. Yeah, my animal. She actually, she's such a sweetheart. Yeah, she's so mellow. The biggest flaw with her is just her uh, mega esophagus, which she just ralphs randomly, and uh, that's under control for the most part. But you can't blame a dog and call it an instigator for puking when it's not its fault. It's not because it ate something. It's because it's just the bile in the stomach. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I can't yell at you. Yeah. You can't. Uh, but it is frustrating when she's standing on linoleum and then walks to carpet and then pukes. That kind of gets annoying. Oh. <laughs> Over Christmas, my sister has this Scottish Terrier. And, uh, you know, those, like, really, the hair dogs, not fur dogs. They have, like, hair. You know what I'm talking about? Um, you know, like a poodle? Like, low allergenic? No, no those are... Or hypoallergenic? Poodles have fur, not hair. They just have really curly fur. Pretty sure. I've never petted a poodle, but I think it's fair. No, it's really fine. It, they're hypoallergenic. Uh, one of those. Scottish Terry. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sporty. It's a sporty. Yeah. Uh, it's it's like a... Scotty. It's makes me think of a schnauzer, but it's just black. Yeah. Kind of. Anyways. Um, 
he, I guess he got into some chocolate or something. Oh, God. And he just started just puking everywhere. <laughs> and I watched this dog not doing anything to stop it because I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I watched this dog walk from carpet to carpet, <laughs> puking on every single little uh, doormat, basically. Are you the only one watching? Yeah. So, so nobody else was like freaking out or anything no nope. it's just you like you know what go ahead dog i'm not gonna try to get you outside i'm not gonna pick you up let me, let me set the scene she has the center counter and she has like a doormat on one side where the bar stools are sitting a doormat on the other side like an the, island in the yeah. kitchen okay and like a, another like little carpeted doormat style thing in front of the fridge one in front of the sink one in front of the front door one in front of the back door she's got little carpet pads everywhere right so there's no actual carpets <laughs> like hardwood surfaces with yeah. Patches. Yeah. Are, oh. And I watched him walk from each individual <laughs> <laughs> little patch of carpet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> what happened after he was done? Did you let him out? Did somebody come and see this? I just turned around and watched TV. I don't know what happened. What a dick. Hey, I, I love my sister, but I hate that fucking dog. He smells... Like rotten sewage. He's got like some kind of infection in his teeth. Plus, he has halitosis or some other shit. And okay, what's just... halitosis? Halitosis is when your breath smells bad, but you can't do anything to stop it. It's like genetic or some shit. Oh, that's... it might not be genetic, but it, you can't stop it easily. Hmm. And it's just awful. That's unfortunate. It's it's a human thing. I don't know if dogs call it halitosis, but he smells so bad all the time. Plus, it's hair and not fur. So when it smells like a wet dog, it smells like a wet dog. Okay, and we're good. Jesus Christ. We're good. I got I got two stories. Can you imagine vomit like stuck inside your nose? Because that's like being around that dog. Anyways, I have two stories. <laughs> just uh, about. Oh, also, we got a hoverboard. You know, or not a ho- uh, power board. Power board. You know, that, like segways, but without the stick in the middle. That's a that's a hoverboard. Yeah, they, it's not really a hoverboard. I know, it's really not. It, the actual box says power board. Oh, does it? Yeah. Oh, that's misleading. Anyways. You got that. Yeah, well, my niece got that. And <sighs> and you, what did you get for Christmas? Your niece got a hoverboard. Yeah, those things are like $400. And seven. what did you get? Yeah, two pairs of socks. Were they? Are they good? Are they comfortable? Were they warm? I haven't opened them yet. <laughs> oh, you ungrateful bastard. And I bought a bunch of people dinner. If that counts. <laughs> that doesn't count as a gift for you, other than the time you spent with your family. Which is the greatest gift of all. Okay, so I read the first section, and do you want to read a section? Uh, yeah. Where? Where which would... Becoming a Whatever's father? Whatever's next, man. Fi- I thought you wanted to pick and choose. Um, you do Becoming a Father, wait, physically and emotionally aspects of pregnancy. Yeah, I want to do that one. Okay. So you do becoming a father. Becoming a father. A father can play an important role in the, in his partner's pregnancy. Your job as a father begins long before your baby is born. About nine months approximately. Two of my friends on Facebook watched the amnesia video. Are you engaged at all? Yeah. As engaged as I physically can be. I've got a handicap. Like in golf... Whenever, actually, I don't know what a handicap in golf is. I was about to just pull a, pull an analogy out of my ass and then research. Get later. Research has shown that women with supportive partners have fewer health problems in pregnancy and more positive feelings about their changing body. Good. All right. Rose, they have more positive feelings about their changing body. Yeah, you know, like being okay with it. Well, no, you need to read out loud. No, I was just going over what you said because that seems kind of ass backwards. Research has shown that women with support, oh, with supportive partners have fewer health problems in pregnancy and positive feelings about their body. I thought it was saying by becoming pregnant, they're going to feel better about themselves. Oh, no. I don't like, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I think this pamphlet's setting you up for failure. <laughs> you, walk, you walk in the other room like, damn, honey, you're getting fat. She gets super pissed off, you know, like, I thought you were going to be happy about it. <laughs> Sorry. Physical and emotional aspects of pregnancy. Pregnancy lasts about 40 weeks, which is equal to nine months. If you didn't know. <laughs> uh, the nine month, 
the nine months of pregnancy are divided into three months periods called trimesters. The due date that you are given by your partner's health care provider is only an estimate of when the baby will be born. That fucker comes when it wants. Sometimes you gotta go month, in after it. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's like, no, I'm staying in here. It's warm, right? Um, I was a C-section. I think I was a preemie too. I think it was really early, maybe. There was something weird about my birth. Um, I know I got stuck. Besides the I, fact that my mom was doing things she shouldn't have been doing while she was pregnant, but uh, go on. I got stuck. You got stuck? Yeah, the Did doctor. Did you come out sideways? That happened to one of my siblings. Well, it wasn't sideways. My, my shoulders were not set right, and so they actually pushed me back in a little bit to rotate me, and my mom was freaking, what are you doing? <laughs> 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 it's like um, it's like one of those um, toys, the little rubber domes that you turn inside out and let it pop out. You have to, it was like about to pop, and they just like shoved it back <laughs> Let it reset you're waiting timer. for anticipation you're like nope reset Boop. <laughs> I used to do that um, my sister would be playing with them or something and they're just about to pop and she, you know we're like four years old or some shit well I was like four years old she was like seven or something so she'd be like covering you up and like covering your ears like it was gonna be a big thing cause she's a fucking kid or whatever and just I'd push it back down or I'd grab it and pop it inside out and set it back down <laughs> cause she'd look away I don't know. The due date... Oh, wait. I already read that. Most babies are born two weeks before or after the due date. The due date is based on the day... Wait a second. Is, is that true? Are babies... you? So, the due date is actually a four-week, like, gimme. Window. Yeah, it's, a, it's, so, a, it's within a month. <laughs> really? I didn't... Re- yeah, that I seems kind of cheap. Not, not that I'm saying they should be able to do better, but I've heard a lot, a lot of people say... Oh my god, my baby's two weeks early, or something like that. And I'm like, that's normal. I don't know. That's shocking to me. Well, even if it is normal, it doesn't mean that the baby uh, is as developed as it should be when it comes out. Yeah, but two so weeks. So it can still be like, oh shit, we got to get in there, and it may have to. No, I'm not saying bigger. just because it's two weeks early. That's a like. It's not. A it's death golden sentence. because it's, yeah. it's still in that four week time zone. I'm just, you know. I didn't it seems like people, broad. yeah. It seems like people freak out a lot about it when it, it says right here it's actually normal. Um, the due date is based on the day the mother's last menstrual period started. Several websites offer due date calculators that you can use or try this simple formula: take the date of the first day of her last menstrual period and subtract three months. Then add seven days to get the due date. Subtract three months. Yeah. Uh, take the day of her last menstrual period, subtract three months, then add seven to get your due date. Okay. So why not just subtract two months and three weeks? Why would you subtract three months and then add a week? That's still whatever. Well, why are you subtracting anything? You take that date and add. You would, Yeah, I mean, you would think, right? You know what? Well, hold up. Yeah, that's a good question. Why are you <laughs> subtracting three months? You take the last time she menstruated... And then add three months. Subtract. So so you go back three more periods, basically. So she should have been her baby about the time so you're pregnant. that you conceived the child. This is really fucking confusing. So you're pregnant three months before your last period that you're pregnant for? What? You know, we may be overthinking this. Let's just skate on by. Just like the Navy. Do not be surprised if this due date changes. Most women receive an ultrasound examination at 18 to 20 weeks of pregnancy. So you got that to look forward to. This exam... There's a lot to look forward to, just not that. (laughs) This exam gives an estimate. Gives an an estimate. Estimate? Nope. Estimate? Yep. Okay. This exam gives an estimate of the actual age of the fetus. The due date may be changed as a result. Well, that's actually... Do you want to read early pregnancy first trimester? Or do you want the option to skip to domestic violence? I really want to do domestic violence. You do this one. Okay. (laughs) What are you looking at me for? All right. I got excited. Early pregnancy first trimester. The first 14 weeks of your partner's pregnancy is called the first trimester. 14 weeks. 
Are they all 14 weeks? Wouldn't it be 12 weeks? Because it's 12 divided by 4. Or yeah. You, yeah, 12 divided by well, it's 4 a little, is 3. Yeah, but there's a little bit more than 4 weeks in a month. I don't think it's... Not that. much. It's you know, 28 days. Let's not overthink like this. Let's, they have been doing this for hundreds of years. Maybe. I don't think this pamphlet has been out for hundreds of You're years. You're right, though. but they've, I'm sure they've had trimesters for... Who knows? All right. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Called the first trimester. During this time, most women need more rest. We need a doctor here to answer all these stupid-ass questions. Dur- what? During... <laughs> oh, I agree with that. Women in early pregnancy also may have symptoms of nausea and vomiting. Well, she definitely has nausea, but luckily not vomiting. Although not common... Yet. Although... Your dog has vomiting. No, he doesn't. She does. No, she doesn't. She can't contract her stomach or some shit, so she vomits. No, we we medicate that, and she has her special feed tray. That doesn't happen anymore. Okay, well, maybe she just has simple sympathy puking is where I was going with that, but you ruined it. Oh. It wasn't even going to be funny, but they don't need to know that. Yeah, I'm just going to cut that out. And I want to bring back to me right when I said cut that out. Although commonly known as morning sickness, these symptoms can occur at any time during the day or night. Oh, that sucks ass. Yeah, I thought she was safe in the evening yeah because it's morning yeah morning <laughs> sickness. how can you have morning sickness at night early pregnancy can be an emotional time for a woman you should call it untimely sickness <laughs> any time <laughs> sickness any, whenever the fuck you wants to sickness why don't we just call it pregnancy why not attitude sickness attitude yeah because the sickness has got an attitude it's like oh you're happy fuck you <laughs> mood sickness <laughs> are common you may have mixed feelings as well you may feel... You want to eat out. those cinnamon bread sticks? Fuck you! <laughs> Don't puke. <laughs> it, it is actually that bad. She'll look at her smell food and she instantly becomes nauseous. I feel bad. She's actually lost weight. You know, I kind of wish that you could, um, you could share some of the physical burdens of being pregnant. Because it's just not fair. You know, I, I got a lot of sisters and I'm... The vast majority of my women, of my family, are women. So I kind of got a, I got a big soft spot for them, and I've seen a lot of them go you through pregnancies. Got a pregnancies. soft spot for females. Yeah, I've got a lot. I've seen a lot of chicks go through pregnancies, and they're just, it's just miserable for the most part. And I, I'm like, you know what? Individually, what's wrong with you doesn't sound that bad. It's just all of it fucked up together. It's awful. So let me just take a couple of those or something. Just a couple symptoms? Yeah. Um, hold on. I got a joke first, though. If I can remember it. Fuck. Um, oh, okay. Um, yeah, I remember. So this man and this woman go into a fertility clinic or uh, whatever. Um, nine months later, they, everything's good. They're about to have their baby. Um, so she starts going into labor. And the doctor's like, Sir, we have this brand new technology that's never been heard of before. We're going to link your brain up to hers. Um, uh, you know, you're going to take some of the pain. The father takes some of the pain away. Um, but we highly advise you never go to 100%. You can't take it all. I could kill you. Um, it's too much too much stress on the brain. And it's like wireless or some shit, but whatever. Um, so he So he's sitting there and he's like, all right, let's do it. Um, so, so usually we start with 10% pain. So, uh, he says, okay, give me 10% pain. And so they turn on the machine and they turn it to 10% pain. And he's like, you know what? This isn't that bad. Give me 20%. So he turns it up to 20% and he says, he starts to feel a little uncomfortable, but he's like, you know what? She's still taking 80. I'm taking 20. Let's go 50, 50. So he turns it up to 50% and he's like, he starts sweating real bad. He's sitting in the chair. He's like, you know what? I don't know why women complain so much about pregnancy. It's not that bad. It doesn't hurt that bad. Turn it up to 100%. He said, sir, you could really genuinely die. Don't do this. And he says, you know what? I'm good at 50. We can do, t- I can do twice this. It's easy. So he turns it up to 100%. He says, you know what? That just, that wasn't that bad. I don't know why women complain so much. So the the wife had a wonderful pregnancy, no pain. It all got transferred to the father. Uh, he he walks home with his with his new family. They get home and they said uh, they find out that their mailman died. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. 
<laughs> that is bad. In terrible agony. <sighs> <laughs> I get you. <laughs> All right. There's a couple uh, arguing. Oh, uh, this is this a, is this a joke cast now? Well, you opened up. <laughs> okay. There's a ahead. couple arguing about uh, which is worse, pregnancy, like uh, labor pains, yeah, or giving birth, or getting kicked in the nuts. And the guy said, "Well, it's obviously getting kicked in the nuts." Right. And he said, and the female's like, no, obviously it's giving birth. I mean, you try shoving a watermelon out of a hole that's, you know. Ooh. you know. I mean, for some it's that big. Anyways, <laughs> he says, no, 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 getting kicked in the nuts is way worse. And I'll tell you why. I have a friend, uh, and, uh, or no, it's, it's, it doesn't even have to have a friend. You just think about it. A woman has a, a child. She hates it, doesn't want to ever have one again. Maybe about the, the child. <laughs> no, not the child. The experience. <laughs> But maybe five years later, maybe a couple years later, she's like, let's have another kid. All right? The pain's worth it. You're right. Uh, a guy gets kicked in the nuts. Nowhere in his life does he say, kick me in the nuts again. <laughs> it's true. All right, where was I at? One way to feel more involved is to get with your partner to her... Per- I'm not reading correctly. Uh, you may... F- Feel left out as she focuses on her changing body and emotions. Yeah, I would. I, yeah. I kind of do. I haven't been getting my morning sandwiches for lunch anymore. <laughs> That's because of the puppies, mostly. <laughs> oh, okay. And me being lazy. One way to feel more involved is to go with her. Go with your partner to her parental per, prenatal care visits and when tests are performed. Read. Oh, yeah, I can read so much better than you, <laughs> judging by your amnesia last night. Read books about pregnancy together and talk about what you have read. Listen to her, listen to your partner and offer support. Isn't that just like being a husband? Listen to your uh, partner and offer support. Like the idea is. That does, I mean, that's what a husband does. Oh. Okay, well, okay, anyways, you want to read uh, Ah, yeah, violence. I want to read Domestic Violence. That's kind of short, though. I think we should learn more about domestic violence. Can you um, can you Google search like the Wikipedia for d- domestic violence? No. Does domestic violence have a Wikipedia page? Probably. I would assume so, but no. You know, Wikipedia is kind of funny because things. The when I think of a Wikipedia page, I think of it like a, like a biology, uh, a bio biology biography of someone or something. You know, domestic violence is kind of like a term. You know. I don't think it should really have a Wikipedia. It's a subject. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Domestic violence. Many pregnant women are abused by their husbands or partners. Abuse during pregnancy can pose a risk to both the woman and her baby. Dangers of this violence include miscarriage, vaginal bleeding, low birth weight. For her or for the baby? Baby. Uh, And injury. The National Domestic Violence Hotline number offers assistance with addressing this difficult family issue. Call this number that nobody's ever called before, or TTY, this other number. What is TTY? Telephone time, yeah? (laughs) I mean, that's kind of a genuine guess. I don't know, what is TTY? Telemarketers talk your ear off. I don't know. I don't know. TTY that number, though. Yeah. I'm going to Google it. All right, you do that. Mid-pregnancy, second semester, second trimester. Second semester. There's three, two more to go. Three more to go. <laughs> you see how I, see how I did in school. Uh, for most women, the second trimester are, God, for most women, the second trimester of pregnancy, weeks 14 to 28, a TTY is, is a special device that lets people who are deaf text to talk or talk to. Is a special device <laughs> that, let, that allows people who are deaf, hard of hearing, or speech impaired use the telephone to communicate by allowing them to te- type text message. A TTY is required at both ends of a conversation in order to communicate. Thank you. 
I could not physically have gone on without knowing that. It was bothering me so bad. Weeks 14 to 28 is the time they feel the best. As the women... Hey, man, you got know, a you know, little golden zone. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know about this, actually. It's like the eye of the storm. Yeah, make sure... Yeah, <laughs> the eye of the storm. Make sure you fuck up in that week. <laughs> Let's plan ahead. Wait, now I got 14 weeks. It's 14 to 28. Uh, as the women... As the woman's body adjusts to being pregnant, she usually begins to feel better physically. Her energy level improves, and morning sickness usually goes away. As That's great. That's good for her. As your partner's abdomen grows, the pregnancy becomes more obvious. Soon, you both will be able to feel the Shouldn't baby... Shouldn't be uterus grows? The abdomen doesn't change size, does it? I, mean, I know it's just to be like... Uh, they may not have wanted got that technical. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I know that's what they I mean, meant. They could have said belly. But, or tummy. Yeah. Or stomach. Which is a weird way of phrasing it. Go on. To I me. I don't know where I was at. Uh, abdomen growing? Abdomen growing. The pregnancy becomes more obvious. Soon Her you... abdomen's huge. Sorry, go on. <laughs> Soon you both will be able Are to you feel... expecting? <laughs> Your abdomen's so big. <laughs> you look jacked as fuck. <laughs> Soon you yeah, both... Like a 16... Shut up! <laughs> 16 back in my... Soon you, you both be will be able to feel the baby move and listen to the heartbeat during prenatal care visits. I didn't know you could listen to the heartbeat. Late pregnancy, third trimester. In the third trimester, the pregnancy of the pregnancy, weeks 28 to 40, your partner may feel some discomfort as the baby grows larger and your body gets ready for the birth. And ruined. What? Nothing. She may have trouble sleeping, walking, quick walking quickly, and doing routine tasks. I mean, you have w trouble walking quickly, so maybe this whole pregnancy thing will just equal you two out. Right? <laughs> it is normal for both of you to feel excited and nervous as you would when your labor will start. Pregnancy so really, what she should be sensitive to yours. Your nervousness and anxiety about this. Situation. Well, I do like the fact that she's not gonna, only but... she's going to slow down because she w does walk fast. And she always, <laughs> no, seriously. Like, Would you come on? I said, what? I'm just walking. Are you in a hurry? Well, you walk fucking slow. So I want her side. Andrea, I'm on your side. <laughs> I'm on your side. Okay. Do you want to read Please pregnancy and sex? Up. Yeah. Please let that get picked up by the mic. No, I want I want to do for sure things to think about before the Pregnant. birth though. Pregnancy and sex. Many couples worry whether it is safe to have sexual intercourse during pregnancy unless your partner's healthcare provider has told you otherwise. That's what uh, when they tell you otherwise you don't fucking listen. It says it right here, so you're in the clear. Um uh, you can have you can have sex throughout the entire nine months. Sex is not harmful because the baby is protected within the uterus um, and it is cushioned by fluid. There may be times when your partner does not feel comfortable enough to have intercourse. You can at that moment ignore her needs and. I'm giving you advice. <laughs> I'm not gonna listen to you. <laughs> yeah. I listen to a doctor before I listen to you. It's in the pamphlet. <laughs> Uh -huh. It says it says ignore her, get it off. I mean shoot off shoot. Off. <laughs> I can't say it. I can't recover now. I'm just gonna keep reading. You two can ex ooh you two can experiment to find which positions are easiest for her. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lock eyes with me when you do that. <laughs> and the health um. If the healthcare provider says that you and your partner should not have intercourse, there are other ways to be intimate during her pregnancy. A wink. There's I little there's little illustrations down here of like blowjobs. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know what one was. <laughs> well, it's a sex education and a pregnancy education in one pamphlet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cover your bases. Saving trees. <laughs> Right. Or plastic, whatever the fuck this thing's made out of. Uh, life, certainly not latex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lifestyle changes. Risk. There's plenty of that going around. Parental care. <laughs> 
Pre- pre- plenty of latex pre- saved. Prenatal care. Uh, labor and delivery. Uh, what to expect getting ready. Things to think about before the birth. Ooh, that's probably a good section. Stage of labor. First stage. You know what? Let's read. Let's read things to think about before the birth. All right. Now, I've already, you know, I've had some time to think about this already. So I'm curious to see what I've overlooked. Hold on. Hold on. Let me think. Just give me one second. You want to think about what you would expect? No, I, I think there might be a better way of doing this. Hold on. What if I read it? And I tell you if I thought about it or not. Or, no, I was thinking, I wish it was, hold on, let me see it real quick. Yeah, yeah, let me, because it all, it starts with a question every time. So, let me ask them, you answer, and we'll read the answer, all right? Okay. All right, things to think about before the birth. Do you want to cut the umbilical cord? You know, I had not thought of that until we were at that first meeting or doctor visit. Yeah. And they, they, was, they looked at me like, I don't care. <laughs> I, I I didn't care. They're just, it's just they're just judging you like you heart of this fucking monster. Yes, I have you not thought of this. this is a like, special how, moment. Why would you not jump at the opportunity? I'm, I'm more interested in the child than its umbilical cord. Me, me, I don't like the idea of cutting flesh with scissors just to begin with. So you know. So you're a no. I don't know if I'm a no, but I, it's not something I'm jumping at. I mean, and another and, and another factor to this issue is I'm pretty sure that either me or hopefully our healthcare is paying a doctor to do this stuff. I just imagine why do I have to get in there and get my hands dirty? I just imagine yeah <laughs> why do I have to do your job? I mean, I'm paying you to come I mean, this he went shit. to he went to school for this. I mean I don't I don't hire a gardener to go out there and model a tree for him. I just imagine you sitting in the doctor's office telling him all this and they're, there's like a group of like nurses and shit, and they're just like all looking at you like you fucking pig. <laughs> and my wife's <laughs> nodding her head like, you know, it, I expect that from him now. All right. Um, you may be asked if you want to cut the cord after the baby is delivered. Talk with your healthcare provider and your partner if you're not sure. Mostly the second one. I don't really give a fuck about the healthcare provider says. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, you should really do this. <laughs> uh, thanks, doctor. Thanks for the advice. <laughs> um, all right, next question. Do you know your partner's wishes regarding pain relief during labor? So, like, do you know if she wants an epidural or do it naturally or whatever? She wants all of the medicine. <laughs> do you know what an epidural is, though? I'm sure, because you're looking into yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's, well, I know. It's, the it's like a spinal tap. They stick a fucking needle in your spine. Epidural is right under your skin. What am I, what's, what's it called then? An epidural. No, there's, there's this fucking thing where they stick a needle in the base of your spine. We're Google searching this before we continue. Mississippi Roads. Hello and welcome to Mississippi Roads. It's a podcast. I don't know. We'll we'll, we'll incorporate that somehow. We are um, we're trying a new thing where we um, where we uh, put some foam in the little cubby that I usually put my phone in. Did I say phone twice? Did I say foam? foam? Oh, I, st- I did say foam. Okay. I, well, I forget I know what, what I say sometimes. Say. Anyways. Um, so he's cutting that right now, um, very half-assedly, if I do say so. Actually, that never mind. I take that back. That's pretty so good. It, bounce, it won't bounce off the sides. Yeah, but you need one on the bottom, right? It is on the bottom. Is it? Oh, you already did that. Oh, okay. It's just one piece. Oh, I thought you. Uh, you never mind. Anyways. Or you think you should put a little piece back there too? Yeah, just in case, because we got the foam. Yeah. We got it. Use it. Yeah, it's it should be really thin though. Yeah, because it's curved. Okay. I then, almost want. Like I almost kind of want to climb up in there. It's mm-hmm. almost half. And it, you don't need that much. You need like half of that. Yeah, that'll work. And then stand it up if you can. We put it in first. Does it stand up? We can edit all this out just for the record. 
thank you for letting your editing guy. Know. Yeah, don't don't forget Fry to edit this out as I'm talking to you in the car. Is that weird? Is it weird that technically I'm it's talking like talking to, talking you to, in to me in the future? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I think it's gonna still hit on the rim. Well, I mean, not if I pull it out like that. Hopefully, it doesn't completely muffle it though. Is this, hold it. Hold on, let me turn it this way because the speaker or the mic's on this side. Check, check, check. I should lock my phone. Check, 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 check. DJ MC Rose. That's it. Womp. That's you're gonna be your like tone. Womp. No, that's a Jersey Shore thing. Um, did you watch that show? Yeah, I did. Like to make fun of it or yeah. like seriously watched it? No, I didn't. If anybody seriously watches that show, no offense to any viewer who seriously watched that show, but like if you were actually invested in their lives, you yourself have a very terrible life, clearly. I don't know. I, that might be awful to say, but it might I be. just, I, <laughs> I feel like if that is an entertaining life to you, your, your morals should be brought into question. Well, maybe they just find it so silly, like they didn't take it seriously. Well, that is the point of the show. That's what I took it as. That's what I mean. But if you seriously take it like, oh my god, I can't believe Jay Wow did that to Snooky, then that's like, wow. Like, do you really care? The only thing I know like, of wow, it Snooki's is. Like, wow, Snooky's being such a bitch. The only thing I know of it is from one of the episode of South Park. Yeah, I know. That's, that's where you get most of your yeah. pop culture references from. Yeah. All right, uh, Mississippi Roads. We are now at the bank, so I'm going to pause. Uh, pause our broadcast for Fry, and we'll resume shortly. Don't worry. Why, why don't you just have a little monologue? <laughs> just so, while I'm gone. So I mean, I might. We'll see. It'd be neat. All right. Let's. Uh, that's not a bad idea. All right. Monologue, huh? Um. Fry is no longer in the car. I'm sitting in front of Longhorn Steakhouse. Um, I don't know, this is a lot of pressure, not talking to someone. Hi Fry, because you're going to edit this out, I'm sure. So the history of karate, um, this is not, this is like, I don't know. 95% accurate. I, I'm sure I have some of the time frames mixed up, but um. Thanks for listening to It's a Podcast. If you'd like to hear more of this segment, check out the extra content at the end of this podcast. So that way, when an impact does happen, those muscles engage. It's It saves your body a lot. Cool. So this is what happens when I leave you alone and you monologue. I didn't know what else to talk about. That's fine. I've got one thing. That's fine. I've got one thing that I can go on for hours about. That's all right. Okay, let's switch gears. So, um, how how was your travels? Do you have any other interesting stories? Because you, you went from the Gulf Coast here at Mississippi to Oklahoma. To Conroe, Texas to Oklahoma. Thank you. Whoop de doo, you know. I saw a boat parade, motherfucker. A boat parade in yeah. Texas? Yeah. Cause every every year well, not that makes it seem like it's been going on for a long time. I don't know how long it's been going on, but for the at, last few years. At least two years. <laughs> <laughs> they do Annually. A, yeah. They do uh they everybody not everybody, but a lot of people deck out their boats in lights, like Christmas lights. So we're just talking regular private boats. Yeah. Okay. And they'll do a parade like on the lake of water. not on trailers pulled by trucks, but actually on water. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So like people who live on the lake can get binoculars and watch the boats drive by with their Christmas lights and whatever. And that's music, interesting. Music playing. That it is really interesting. I pictures. How was the weather? Huh? Was it warm? Yeah, it was warm. It's very warm. <laughs> Don't give me that. Could be cool. You were you had snow in Oklahoma, and I had like fifty degree weather in Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. It, wasn't, it wasn't that much snow. It was a little bit of snow, mostly ice, but yeah. yeah. Oh, man. 
My little fourteen year old niece is a fucking badass. You want to hear what we did? You know what? That that's interesting. Can I, I'm gonna cut you off because I got a sign from. No, you can't. I, I got a sign from my. Uh, you did? Why'd my, you ask? My in laws. Why'd you ask? And it says, I forgot what it says. I need to post it right on my wall here. Actually, probably right on that wall. And it says, uh, swearing or something like that, and like ampersands and weird symbols. And it has a red circle with a red line going through it. And I think it's a message. <laughs> So I'm going to consciously try to reduce my swearing, even though I think I was the first one to swear three times on this podcast. Uh, <laughs> but you just went at it, and I'm like, oh, no. But I'm like, oh, i got to stop it, too. Anyways, I your 14-year-old cousin I don't, is awesome. I don't feel any, I don't feel any shame for, for cursing. I do, because I'm about to have a baby, and the wife was also getting on me about it. Does that mean I have to watch what I say? No, I'm just saying... For me, and... Okay, good. And so that's fucking funky bullshit. All right, okay. That's funky You're bullshit. really gonna... I'm gonna, I'm gonna beep the crap out of you. <laughs> Person's trunk in front of you, up underneath their legs. I don't know if I was laughing because of the concept or because you were laughing. <laughs> but <laughs> why? Let's just make you deal. How do you know all this? How do you not? I don't know what, a, what, what an elephant walk. Yeah. A fraternity thing. A fraternity thing. Oh, yeah. thank the Lord I was not in a fraternity <laughs> then. I didn't know fraternities were homosexual. Oh, my God. Are you serious? There's so much sexual content in fraternity hazing. Ugh. It's like all it is is just homoerotic bullying. You look forward to do that one day? Is that what you transpire to do? No. Are we recording? Yes. Oh. Oh, thank God. <laughs> you, you should don't... always just assume I'm recording. You never tell me! I don't want to tell you. Whatever. Um. Did you get the part about the elephant walk? Like the beginning? No. I asked Fry if he wanted to go on an elephant walk and he didn't know what it was. Context. Boom. Why would you want to go on an elephant walk with me? Huh? If it's just two people... You're like, what are we doing next? Well, what whose else trunk's getting held? If it's just two people. Cause, good question. Because you're not going to get reciprocal. Here's the question. Here's the question. Hold on. It could be like a dog chasing its tail. Hold on. So, would you rather be the holder or the holder? Because, right, you don't really want to hold it, right? Because that's kind of that's homoerotic. But... You don't really want to be the whole E either, because, like... Because that's like, less homoerotic. No, but it's going to... They're, but they're equally! More, you have to walk, though, and somebody's going to be yanking on your dick. Why are you yanking on it? How are you not going to yank on it? I'm taller than you. Like, I would have to reach underneath, and there would be pressure pulling down the entire time, just by the way I'm taller than you. Right? So wouldn't you not want to be the whole E? I mean, like, yeah, I don't want to really touch your dick, but at least I'm not getting my dick yanked on uncomfortably. Are you wanting a serious answer to this? Both. Because I think I'd rather be getting held because then I don't have to be hunched over and I don't have my forearm in somebody's ass crack. <laughs> You're right. But, <laughs> but that sounds so uncomfortable, doesn't it? Just to get tugged. Like with every step you just get uncomfortably tugged to your to your I think full, you'd get used to it. Full length. I mean it may help. It, yeah, it might make it longer. I think uh, yeah, I would rather be yeah, if we're if we're doing this then you're holding me. <laughs> it sounds like a deal because you would rather be the holder. Are you uncircumcised? You're not circumcised, right? I am circum Why are we talking about that? I'm just curious. I wanna know what I'm about to be holding. I wanna know if there's a little stop for me to hold. No. Well, yes, there would be if you're circumcised. Oh, well, that, that I thought you meant like... The little plunger it, at the end. Well, I me. thought you were talking like a slinky when it just like... <laughs> <laughs> like dang, it stops. It's like, no, I'm not. it's not really a slinky. I... Sometimes I wish I was uncircumcised just so I could play with it. You know? You, I, you, you can... I've you, never seen an uncircumcised penis in the flesh. In the so much flesh. So much flesh. I don't, I, I'm trying to think if I were, maybe it's because I, I, I am circumcised, but if I were a woman, I would want my guy to be circumcised just because of the, the hygiene, the hygienics of it. Yeah. 
And that's why they. That's why I was, and that's why if I have a son, he's going to be that way. And I told Andrea, I'm like, okay, yeah, you want to fight, is. Andrea? We're going to fight because I'm telling you right now, if we have a son, he's going to be circumcised. She's like, okay, I'm like, what kind of fight is that? <laughs> you just rolled over on that. I said, well, I, um, look, you're a man. You know what it's like, so I'm going to let you make the decision. Like, you know, oh. it's a you know, it's a religious thing by nature. Yeah, I know. I've I've seen Robin Hood men in tights. I've seen it, but I don't know what you're referencing. When Mel Brooks was the the Jew, uh, not circum, what do they call circumciser? Circumciser. Circumcisionist. No, I mean it's a brisk, but I, I thought there was a name for the rabbi that did it. I don't know. But yeah, anyways, yeah, it was to separate uh, what Gentiles. About, what about from... this question? Because I used to watch. Um, what the fuck was it? It's not. It's not Reno nine zero two one zero or. Re- Reno nine one one. No nine. 90- 90210 was... It's that plastic surgery show, right? No, 90210 was like a high school drama oh. in the 90s or 80s. I'm not sure what the name of it was, but it's some plastic Nip-tuck? surgery. No. That show is fucked up. Have you seen it? No, I don't watch most things. I love that show, but it is fucked. It is fucked in the head. My mom should never let me watch that when I was so young. <laughs> I watched it when it came out, and I don't know how old that makes me, but it was young. Type up when Nip Tuck came up. But anyways, counter question. Not really a counter. Uh, supplementary question. Um, when did it come out? 2003. So, what, eight years ago? So I would have been 12? Yeah. It's far too young to be watching that show. I rewatched it when I was older, and I was like, why did I watch this? I'm not old enough now. Hmm. I rewatched it when I was like 18 or something. So Anyways. What were you going to say, though? Um, if you have a daughter, right, and she has... I don't want to sound stupid because I don't know. I'm not sure if all girls are born with it or if just some girls are born with it, but lots of flap. Right? And you can get that cut off surgically, and it's kind of sort of similar to getting circumcised. And some girls... You mean like the, the labia major or something that's... Yeah, just, like the extra skin that doesn't really do much, but it's just extra skin on the outside. Well, can you even tell when it's an infant? I mean, if you're like, whoa, that's a lot of skin for an infant, sometimes then it's going to be a major problem when Sometimes you can, because I was watching this... Well, maybe it's very rare cases, but I was watching this uh, plastic surgery show, and she was like having a fight with her mom. She was like, why didn't she just get it removed when I was a baby still? And she was like, well, I wanted you to have the decision or whatever. But anyway, she was very self-conscious about how much extra skin she had. If it is noticeable as an infant, I would definitely consider it to make the child what, I guess, normal. I would make the decision and I would hope that they would realize I was intending it for their best. Um, You haven't been with many women, which is good. I wish... I have... Thank <laughs> you. It's like, you're an asshole, but it's a good thing. It's like, what is no. <laughs> an insult and then, but it's a good thing. No, it's a good thing. It's what, more what, respectable. Who is, who is Martha Stewart? It's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but uh, in your... No, not like what you experienced. Uh, it only happened once, but I'm pretty sure like physically it could have happened more. I don't know. Edit this out. <laughs> nope. <laughs> You're such a dick. Well, you shouldn't bring this. You stuff edit up. the stuff out that you don't want because I'm editing. Do you want to edit? Do you want to be more of the production line? Thanks for listening to. It's a podcast, and if you've actually gotten to this point. I salute you. I don't think I would have lasted this long listening to Rose and I babble. So, Anyways, we do have some extra uh, content here at the end. If you'd like to hear Rose talk about the uh, origination of uh, martial arts, I believe, um, take it as a grain of salt, um, uh, or maybe the Cliff Notes version of the history. Uh, Anyways, thanks again, and uh, hope to hear you back, see you back. What would you do on a podcast?
So the history of karate. Um, this is not. This is like I don't know. Ninety-five percent accurate. I, I'm sure I have some of the time frames mixed up, but um, there was thousands and thousands of years ago. There was a bunch of poor farmers, and they um, they were like, "Fuck, we need." to figure out a way to defend ourselves for defending it against other farmers trying to take their land um, or against the law or whatever because it's a very corrupt law system and so at first what they did was they just and they called it a martial art it was basically they just worked out they get down to the beach they do body conditioning they pick up the jugs with their fingertips throw their hands in some sand uh, like they'll, they'll finger jab the sand and stuff and that there was they were just getting stronger and making their body more conditioned and that and getting in shape and that's what they called martial arts for them to begin with um, it wasn't really a fighting style throwing punches and kicks until later um, when some of the some of the trade opened and some people from China came over to Japan and China had been doing it for a long time and they have been doing Shaolin temple boxing, the Shaolin monks. And the topography of China is very different because in the north you have lots and lots of mountains and in the south you have lots and lots of plains. So in the north, their fighting style was extremely linear and it was very front and back. And in the south, their fighting style was extremely three-dimensional, but they didn't have as hard of hits. Because when you're standing on the side of a mountain, you can't go left or right or you're going to fall off the fucking mountain. So their hits were very straight forward and back, so it was easy to predict coming, easy to dodge, but they were much stronger, harder hitting hits because they had to make it count. Um, in the planes, though, you could move in 360 degrees, and it was a lot different um, if you get ambushed in a plane as opposed to on a mountain road. So theirs wasn't necessarily as hard. It could be. They could do that, but... More so, theirs was like fighting multiple opponents or uh, moving around and using angles and stuff like that. So that was so that's very interesting. But um, so both of those though kind of came into play in Japan in their karate because when they started to add up some of that, how to punch, how to kick, and stuff like that, um, they took both. So. In karate, we have very long stance, such as back stance, and you do sliding steps with those for very hard, uh, easy to see, but very hard hitting moves. And then you have very three dimensional moves, uh, even blocking to the side, doing hard blocks and soft blocks to the side, and punching and kicking sideways and forward and to the back in all four directions on diagonals, turning movements all sorts of crazy jazz. So in karate, they kind of incorporated both. So they were already in shape, and now they had a base for their fighting style um, that they kind of that they kind of just adapted from others, which is why karate is really the original MMA because uh, it, it basically stole from other martial arts and made it its own, which is what MMA is. Um, um, so they had... They were in shape, they had a fighting style, they just needed a way to teach it to others. And there's very, very poor farmers back in feudal Japan, so they couldn't, um, they couldn't really read and write. They couldn't read and write, they couldn't transcribe like that. So they had to, um, they had to, um, I'm going over the synopsis for my, for my rock opera. Rock opera? Rock opera. Rock opera. Yeah, rock opera. You're writing? An opera? Yeah. No, I'm going over the history of karate. I didn't know what else to talk about. So, um, they couldn't really read and write. So, wait, wait, wait. What, what, what were we talking about a rock opera? I was a fucking joke to me. Oh, I think I was so, sorry. I, well, I take it. I'm, I'm pretty literal. Go that way. Why? But I just want you to turn left because there's a meeting here and you can't turn left there. Why do you want me to turn left? Because it's easier to go home. Why? I... I'm pretty sure I just told you why. I said it's easier to go home. So they couldn't read and write. So they had they were in shape. They had a um, they had a basis for a fighting style that they stole from China, 
and they needed a way to pass that down through the generations. So what they did was they did katas or kamidis or bunkais and they're basically just pre-arranged fights. Actually that's literally the translation for bunkai I'm pretty sure is pre-arranged fight. And uh, so instead of writing it down and saying punch here, kick here, it was kind of like uh, it's kind of like a dance almost. An illustration. Yeah, an illustration with your body that they had to, that they memorized, taught to somebody else, and then that kept going. So those were called the Koyer Katas, and those are thousands and thousands of years old. As karate became more popular, it became more effective, they adapted even more aspects of martial arts, um, not just punching, kicking, blocking, being in shape. They, um, they started incorporating weapons which is uh, called shuriken to destroy with weapons. Um, they would just throw some sticks, tie them together, and throw them in your wood basket as you're walking down the street. The local samurai, the local police, whatever, didn't know that you had a weapon on you. So when they, because it was a very corrupt system, like I said, um, that whenever they come up on you, try and steal your shit, you just whip out some fucking nunchucks and take care of them, and you were trained in them. Uh, uh, same with bow staff um, they'd be walking carrying water on each shoulder or whatever just drop those buckets off and then you have a weapon to protect yourself uh, swords not so much that was more on the enemy side <laughs> that was something that the rich police force could afford but um, so yeah um, and that's actually kind of how ninjutsu started um, same same exact concept poor farmers trying to defend themselves so they used guerrilla warfare and a lot of that was actually from the karate on the island uh, some of the learning how to use their weapons but uh, anyways so they adapted weapons um, as uh, as borders started to open up more the world started to develop more civilization started to grow international trade started to come about they adapted even more uh they started we we took some kicks from taekwondo uh krog maga elbow strikes all sorts of stuff improved upon ourselves by learning from others and uh we just kept growing and then so when it started to move to america though there were more americanized katas developed um just di just different translations basically uh same concept but those are tendoka katas and they're just a couple hundred years old um but we still learn the the koya katas which are thousands of years old um and then uh not iwa what is it uh karate international karate something those tournaments and stuff you can see on you can watch on tv that started to become a thing, more commercial opportunities. And then in the 70s, uh, I, don't, I didn't experience this, but my sensei did, and he's told me about it a lot. Um, there was a big, big drama all centered around um, um, karate being a religion because they were very concerned with, with the Japanese, the Chinese, um, that... Buddhism and other religions were trying to brainwash our youth and stuff like this and I, and all the cults with uh, the family and Charles Manson um, I think that was the same thing yeah I know oh I was saying Charles Manson as the leader of the family oh, I thought you said uh, two they, they looked at karate as a cult and so it died the popularity for it died a lot and um, for a long time they're the karate school that I went to had to be very, very, very careful um, bringing up religion at all uh, for fear that they just rip that parents would just rip them out of class because they thought it was a cult or what have you. But uh, um, that kind of that died down over time. It still is kind of a concern because people are I don't want to say ignorant, but worried. Hey, we just drove past the Christ martial arts school. Um, I don't want to say ignorant, but um, just not on Close the minded. yeah, closed-minded, fearful. See, they see what's on TV and stuff, so they see this wushu, 
voodoo, touch yourself in the, touch you in the head and you die in three days, them off, all that stuff. Um, so they, they, they make this space for martial arts, karate especially, before it ever happens, because, you know, Spongebob, it's, it's, it's looked at kind of like a silly little kid thing. Um, so then, we're a couple years later in the future, and after it became Americanized, I don't know, I don't know the latest and greatest that's going on in Japan, I just know my lineage, so we're over in America now. The actual um, Shojin Miyagi uh, from the Karate Kid, Mr. Miyagi, he uh, pioneered a lot of things in American uh, karate. That's why he's so fu so famous. Um, I don't know. I don't want to say this because I'm not 100% sure if I had the lineage right, but I'm pretty sure it was so Shojin Miyagi teaching Sugichi Taguchi and Sugichi Taguchi teaching my teacher and then him teaching me. So I come from a pretty pretty proud heritage. Um, but anyways, so Shojin Miyagi, it's over in the U.S. They're still back in the day, hardcore, throwing their fingers in sand and then gravel and then rocks to toughen you, punching on a makiwa, which is uh, designed to break down the holes in your bones and make you stronger, beating on your shin, conditioning it that way, same concept, breaking the holes down that are in your bones and compressing them because then when they heal, they're a lot thicker and stronger. Um, they're hardcore doing it on asphalt and concrete, throwing people, busting elbows, breaking necks. And if you use gear to protect yourself or even wrestling mats, then you are a wimp, you are a pussy, whatever. And that's just the culture then. And then over time, they've learned that it, you, they learned because um, the people who had been doing that, the old guys, Oh, left turn with a little bit more notice next time, Fry. Well, you've been through this intersection before, right? Uh, maybe. Anyways, um, with a with more with more wisdom of seeing what happened to the old guys who thought using gear made you a total wuss or whatever and would make you weak, and now they're old and they can barely move. They have arthritis and bone spurs and all these really, really long-term lasting effects. <laughs> Is that better? Yeah. <laughs> well, I know you've entered it from this way before. Fry just, <laughs> Fry's like, right turn, right turn. Um, so, seeing, seeing what happens when you don't use gear to protect yourself and stuff like that, they said, okay, maybe we're, we were a little bullheaded. We should probably rethink this. And now we use all sorts of safety foam and whatever and we really take care of it and now it's more of just like when I fall I don't fall and never like hurt myself I roll out of it or I land completely flat and distribute the weight and it's just muscle memory because I've been doing it I've been doing it for 10 years now and ever since I was a kid and more of a kid and uh, it's just very natural to me and that's kind of what I look at it as it's it's just making you a better human. It trains all the small muscles that you wouldn't get from normal sports. Holding your leg up with your hand on a chair for balance and kicking out and kicking back and not putting your leg down for like 30 minutes at a time. It sounds ridiculous, but it's a totally different workout than you would get from doing a leg press in a gym or whatever. And it trains the small muscles that you're not used to using and that you might not even know about. So that way, when an impact does happen, those muscles engage, it's, it saves your body a lot. Cool. So this is what happens when I leave you alone and you monologue. I didn't know what else to talk about. That's fine. I've got one thing. That's fine. <laughs> I've got one thing that I can go on for hours about. That's all right. And I only needed you to talk for maybe five, ten minutes. Well, you got what you wanted. Yeah. And then some. And then some. I paid you an interest.